Welcome to this edition of the ITPN Report. I'm Adam Kuhn. On this episode, we're going to be talking to the five chase drivers remaining in the ITPN playoffs with just one race remaining this Saturday night at Kansas Speedway. Plus, interviews with Craig Fryer on the Juggernaut Mountain PC Truck Series, Kyle Amon on the 100% Cup Series, and more. Let's get started. Mountain Zero winner Saturday night, Dalton Kelly in the 45 for SBRD joins the show. Congrats again, Dalton. You're fifth place in the championship, but you got your first league win Saturday night. What were the emotions that come with that, considering the near misses thus far in this league? Yeah, you said it with the near misses there. It's just, you know, like relieving just to finally break through and finally get that first career win. And I. You know, I'd rather, you know, it not be how it happened, but for the first career win, I'm going to be more willing to do something like that to finally just get the monkey off my back. Your streak of top 10 finishes came to a brutal end at Phoenix last weekend. So with a stage win, was that bad finish the end of your chase hopes with how close this finish is going to be? Uh -huh. You, you never know with, you know, everyone's basically been struggling throughout the entirety of the playoffs here, so. Uh, obviously, we gave up some points that we could have easily gained at uh, Phoenix right there, just trying to push it too hard and overcorrect it right there out of four. Uh, uh, it is what it is, can't do anything about it. And, uh, just glad to still even have a chance at it right now. Absolutely, the win definitely helped, and like you mentioned a little bit before, there was a little bit of contact. Cameron Caldwell thought it was a little bit controversial in his eyes post-race, and you didn't clear, care about a roughed-up fender. Uh, can you elaborate on that green-white checkered finish, and uh, do you still um, agree about that statement? Do you still agree about that um, after a couple of days off? I mean, you know, it's short track racing, so if you don't have a bent-up fender, you probably didn't go short track racing. But that being said, you know, if it wasn't for the first career win, I, I might grace him a little differently. I wasn't going to deliberately just tuck him in his quarter panel. It uh, just been too far, but, you know, kind of dorm a little bit. I, I would have done that even on the straightaway to try to get that first win. But after that, uh, I, I wouldn't know because we were doing pretty good at getting drive off. So I might have been able to get him without it. Uh, it's just one of those things you don't know. and. In that situation again, um, uh, if I'm like in a hole for the championship, I probably consider doing it. Otherwise, uh, I probably try to drag race him to the line. SBOD ranks second in the team championship going into this weekend. How important is it for that bonus going into the finale at Kansas? Mm, yeah. Um. I would say, you know, driver's championship kind of is the main focus, but if our teammates can have good runs with us, um, I think we can have a chance at it. I know we're in a little bit of a hole, but with how the playoffs have went, if, you know, championship contenders struggle again and my teammates have good runs, there's no reason that we couldn't overtake them and win it. Well, what are your expectations for this weekend's race at Kansas and your championship hopes fresh off this triumphant victory? Uh, yeah, um, going to Kansas, I think it'll be a little cleaner compared to, say, Bristol and Phoenix and Martinsville. Uh, I would be shocked if half the championship contenders wreck out like they have been so far. Uh, just probably draft fest, um... I've had good runs on intermediates, just haven't been able to get the finishes that I've deserved. Looking back earlier this year, but, um, I got confidence heading into it. And lastly, one big topic over the last couple weekends have been non-chasers racing. You chase drivers who are racing for this championship with so much on the line. Are you going to race them any differently this weekend? I mean... If they, you know, do something to mess up, then that kind of, you know, changes how you want to look at them. But, you know, race them as they race me. If they race me clean, then I got nothing against them. 
you know, if it's at the end and they're, you know, racing me hard when, say, someone else is out in front of me where I feel like I could run them down and they're just trying to, like, make me use up my stuff, whether it's a teammate to them or not, then, yeah, that's, that's how they are, and you'll just remember that for next season. All right, well, good luck Saturday night, and we look forward to seeing you fight for this championship. Yeah, hopefully we're uh, up on the champion stage after Saturday. It's Dalton Kelly, Mountainsville win on Saturday night. In the Pitts News Truck Series, Chase leader Carl Felvo now joins the ITPN report. He has a one-point lead after not finishing Mountainsville the other night. Carl, the big one ended your night Saturday night. What did you see there, and what was your thoughts on that crash? Uh, I, I didn't really see the... I think it was Caleb get into Jason, but all I could see from my, my view in the truck was Jason got sideways and clipped. I think Cam was second, came down and got Alonzo, and I basically had nowhere to go. But throughout the throughout the night, there was people trying to time restarts, and it would really stack up the third and fourth rows. Um, I heard that's what happened. I didn't actually physically watch it myself. I was pretty upset with how it ended, so I pretty much rage quit after it blew the engine so not exactly sure what happened but i just seen everybody get turned sideways and pretty much had nowhere to go so yeah it looked like it was contacted with caleb mccurry like you mentioned and uh you and jason gracias made contact at phoenix that put you laps behind and it was a pretty much the theme at mountainsville so how are you going to race non-chasers in the finale after these last couple weekends um, hopefully we can just stay ahead of them. Uh, it's, to me, that's the easiest way, but I don't think that's going to be the case. So I guess being kind of cautious and given space hasn't worked. So I guess we're going to have to be aggressive and maybe rub some doors and maybe move people out of the way. I just have to see how the race goes, I guess. And right now, you are the lone driver that holds the key to their destiny here in this race coming up at Kansas. Um, you are the only driver uh, that can win and almost certainly guarantee winning the championship. So how does that mindset approach, you know, coming into the race, maybe if the call for a strategy call in the stage approaches, does that change anything? Or do you kind of just stick with what you're going to go with heading into it like it's a normal race? I'm just going to head into it like I have the last three. Um, so far, I've pretty much done all my strategy and stuff to match Alonzo, feeling like he was my biggest competition. So I'm probably going to stick with that on Saturday night unless I don't have the raw speed to compete. Then I will probably try and do something to get off strategy. But at least going into the race, we're just going to try and stay on strategy with everybody and try and run even with them. Uh, make sure we lead a lap, try and get the pole, get all those bonus points we can. So, And looking, you know, at the stats on the season, I mean, you know, you have missed four races this season. Yes, you are up there in the top of the categories for, you know, the poles, for the wins, you know, for most laps led, you know, stage wins. You know, you have been just dominant when you've shown up in these races. And now, you know, you've just got that one last race to get there. Um, and you know, these other guys behind you are definitely hungry to get that championship from you and they're going to rough you up a little bit. So, uh, do you think you're going to be able to cruise through this race or do you think you're going to have to push hard? I feel like I'm definitely going to have to push hard. Tire saving is one of my, my weaknesses. Um, tire saving is going to be insanely key, um, Saturday night. So being able to keep the tires on it with, while also being able to run that that same pace as some of the other guys I, I think could be a challenge for me. I was hoping um, if I was going to have a shot, I'd have at least a 10 point buffer coming into this weekend. So clearly don't have that. Um, hopefully we can still pull it off and maybe the goal would be to run out back I, with how the races have been. Maybe, you know, it gets aggressive up front and if we're not up there, we survive it and get it gifted to us. I, it's been Interesting so far these last three races. It's not been what I expected was going to happen. So maybe that trend continues and maybe it doesn't. And you're not going to know until Saturday night. And yeah, as you said, you know, keeping it mistake free pretty much. Um, we saw the incident, you know, in Martinsville, um, you know, running over the choose cone essentially, uh, put you back in the back and put you in the middle of that accident that would happen 
uh, just a couple laps later. So uh, how important is it to be able to uh, not make a mistake, to not have any issues, to put you out back and get you kind of stuck in traffic and the hornet's nest essentially in this field? Yeah, track position is going to be big this weekend. Um, Kansas isn't necessarily hard to pass on. But it is hard to make a pass stick with all the slide jobs that you get going and the momentum racing that we have to do in the trucks. So being able to get that track position either through qualifying or maybe it's pit strategy early in the race or, you know, however we get it. Once we get it, we're going to have to make sure we keep it and don't make any bonehead mistakes like last week. So. Thanks again to Carla Fova for joining the show. Good luck again Saturday night at Kansas to conclude this championship battle. Thank you. Second place, Alonzo Giacano in the 25 of Vortex Racing now joins the show. Alonzo, you got a sixth place finish up Martinsville. I didn't tell the story. You're one point behind Carla for the points lead. But the big one ended your night Saturday. You were leading, and you ended up with a sixth-place result. After a few days removed, are you still fired up about the incident? Definitely. Uh, I mean, I, I still feel like that was our race to lose. Um, that was a really, really fun race all, all night long and uh, until pretty much the incident. But I felt strongly that we were the favorites even though even though uh the one truck led more laps but we had to fight through a lot of traffic and even caught him at one point during the long run from three seconds behind so i felt like we were definitely the the truck to to beat and it sucks that we got it taken away from us like that um so yeah even to this day i'm still kind of mad about it well, I kind of agree. It was your race to lose the way you caught Jason there in the closing laps. And it really became a hectic race, a bunch of chaos at the end with triple overtime restarts. So, what were your overall thoughts on the ending of that race? Um, Not good. I mean, you know, like they say, that's just short track racing. But, yeah, it was just really unfortunate. Um, It was just a domino effect of one guy getting into the other. and because everybody knew the the race was was about to be over they were just so packed tightly it was like a can of sardines up in the front and just one guy hit the other a little bit too hard and and it affected just about everyone on that restart well looking forward to Kansas this weekend like I mentioned before you're just one point behind Carl but it's a tight battle behind you with top six of you guys just clumped together by 11 points and it's essentially going to be a five truck race for the championship Saturday what are you going to have in store for that race we're definitely going to be fast but so are the other five um you know it, it sucks because our, our results don't show how fast we've really been so far in these playoffs and same same goes for I think Cam and and Carl too. Um, we've we've all been really fast, and I'm, I think me and Carl have probably shown the most amount of speed. I feel like either one of the two of us could have easily won any any of these um, previous races, but thankfully, or not so thankfully, we've both had an equal amount of bad luck and trouble so far, which has kept everything so tight and. Now, instead of a, it being just a, a three-man race, like we thought it was going to be at the start of the playoffs, now it's we've invited other people to come in, and and people like um, like Justin Duran have a really s- strong chance of stealing it, but even like Dalton Kelly, who won last week, um, has a strong chance. But it's Kansas. I feel confident at the um, intermediate tracks feel pretty confident in these intermediate tracks so i feel like we're definitely going to show uh what we're made of this week and and hopefully if we stay out of trouble we're gonna walk away as champions 
Well, you mentioned that intermediate tracks success and confidence. You're the only one out of the remaining drivers uh, threatening for this championship who have won on the intermediate tracks this season. Just three of them on the schedule, though, up to this point. So how much does that boost that sh- from that Chicagoland win help? Um, it helps a lot. Um, you know, especially also knowing that there's going to be more of them coming next season, but um, I think Kansas is one of my best tracks as well. It is, you know, really close racing, especially at the start of a run, but once things get spread out, um, you know, I feel really confident about having the experience of being able to manage your tires at these intermediate racetracks, and it's going to really play into um, our strengths, I feel like. So a big theme, especially at Martinsville, but over the last two weekends have been run-ins with non-chasers in these short racetracks. With it being an intermediate fast track at Kansas, do you think that's going to carry over this weekend? Um, I hope not. Um, it's It's been really frustrating, um, especially because we've been so fast and been intending for the win the past two, two weeks or so. And uh, to have someone who really just has no business racing us that hard. I mean, of course, you know, they, they want to go for the win, but you have to understand the circumstances that, that we're racing for. It's been really frustrating. Um, so I hope we don't run into that kind of trouble for, for this next week if we do. Um, you know, <laughs> it is what it is, but it's, I mean... People just have to understand, you know, just to at least give us the respect for us to to be able to race cleanly. Absolutely. Well, thanks again, Alonzo, for joining this edition of the show, and good luck this Saturday night. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Fifth place driver in the standings, Justin Duran, now joins the show. He's also lead rookie of the year driver going into the season finale this weekend at Kansas. So it's a seventh place finish at Martinsville, Justin, but we're going to be paying attention to the rookie of the year fight first off at Kansas this weekend. How much are you going to be paying attention yourself, considering it's a five-truck championship fight, meanwhile, this one-on-one battle for the rookie of the year title? I mean, I got both of them in my eyes this Saturday. I mean, obviously the championship is the main goal. Um, you know, ended up being a rookie of the year would be a pretty nice accomplishment to, based on how I expected the year to go. You know, just kind of mid-place finishes, but I think I've just been better than what I uh, anticipated I'd be. You know, it's going to be uh, something to look forward to on Saturday. Uh, Kansas is a pretty fun track. You can run more than one groove there, you know, top or bottom, so... It's going to be a lot of people fighting for uh, both lines of real estate. You know, like you said, five different drivers competing for the title. So it's going to be uh, some mayhem on Saturday night. Well, we saw a lot of mayhem this last Saturday night. Like I mentioned, it was unfortunately just a seventh place at Mountainsville. You were caught up in a few accidents. Do you have any bad blood moving forward after that kind of chaotic race that everyone kind of got involved in something? Uh, it was just like your typical Martinsville kind of race, a lot of being a banging. I mean, it was really frustrating to end up a seventh out of that. And, you know, I felt I had a better car than that. You know, I was one of the faster guys in practice, qualified fifth. You know, ran in front of the first few laps for uh, Dalton and I got together, and I was spun on the inside wall, and then I just took, I just couldn't back up to the front after that. Kept getting in accidents with people. You know, I got into Cam a little bit in the middle of the race. I had to. Uh, Carl run me over, uh, Dalton ran me over, and then obviously everybody got caught up in the uh, one of the last restarts. So it's a lot more uh, chaotic than probably everybody anticipated. A really sour finish, so uh, that might uh, be giving a little bit less room to some of the competitors out there this week. You know, it's, I feel like I've been one of the cleaner guys all year, and kind of getting you know pushed around doesn't feel too good. So I only got one race left to. Uh, Kind of paying them back, so I mean, uh, just gonna be driving a little them a little bit harder than I've been doing all season. So 
if you know something happens, it's you know, almost kind of warranted. Absolutely. We have seen a lot of contact between non-chase drivers the last couple of weeks with chasers. Is that going to be in the back of your mind Saturday, giving these guys room? Well, I mean, they got a right to, uh, you know, drive their race, a right to go for the win, too. So, I mean, it's kind of unfortunate a couple of the accidents that happened, you know, Phoenix, you know, Jason got in the car and took Alonzo out. And then even the restart, you're not sure if you're going to blame that on Jason or even Caleb. So it's just unfortunate that happened. And even the restart after that, Caleb hit the curb and into one, went up the track and then uh, took me out from second. So, you know, it's frustrating because we're like a title fight. But I mean, I mean, all of a sudden we just can't be expecting them just to pull over for you. It's not fair to them. So, you know, they got their own race to run. So. I don't really expect them to uh, just give us a a red carpet, you know? Well, you mentioned your excitement for Kansas beforehand. What's your overall outlook for the race, considering it's a a mile-and-a-half track and we haven't been to many of them this season? Well, those are probably my favorite tracks to drive. You know, it's kind of uh, a really tiver saving kind of race so you get a lot of guys that are going to go all out and you're going to see them fall off really good especially kansas you know multi-groove it's gonna be a lot of tire wear a lot of people trying to rip the top so their right rear is going to get torn up pretty quickly um even though it's a mile and a half it's probably not one of my favorite mile and a halves i think the only one i would hate more than kansas would probably be texas honestly but you know i'm just going to give it my best shot that's probably better than some of the tracks we've been to lately you know all these short tracks have gotten a lot of uh, bad blood with everybody. So this was a mile and a half. Might get some more space in between everybody this weekend. Sixth place driver in the standings, Michael Kruger from PBO in the number 42 now joins us. Fifth place finish at Martinsville, Mike. You came out of the carnage. What do you think of that race from your seat? Uh, it was just a... Uh... Just wild, really. I'm not. I don't know really if I could put it any other way. Really, I mean, it felt pretty calm about midway through. I, obviously, at the start, it was a bit of a cluster in stage one with uh, the abundant amount of yellows we had and the spins we've had from some of the chasers, with me including. Also, well, partially. Um, at the end, obviously, it was just a big. Just I don't know. I mean really how to put it. I mean just just a bit of a chaotic ending really with in the last thirty laps, just caution spread cautions there at the end and some definite big moments happened just to in the playoff race that or at the end of the playoff race there with um just a lot of us guys getting taken out or having our cars destroyed or pretty much DNFing depending on who it was and just all around a wild finish and ending there for Martinsville. Yeah, Michael, and, you know, with that chaotic finish there coming to the end of it, um, you were able to somehow scrape by for a fifth place. Um, and, yeah, we saw the, the fifth place finish at Martinsville, you know, very chaotic race. You're still able to scrape by and get a good points finish. Uh, but right now you are down 11 points to our uh, points leader, Carl Felber. So you are the long shot here coming into this race. Uh, what's that going to be like? What's your approach going to be this week uh, coming down to it? Um, well, just coming to Kansas, I'll just have to... Um race aggressive probably the most aggressive i've raced all year but also at the same time race everyone clean and try not to screw any of the content championship contenders i'm racing with uh, over and ruin their hopes i'll just i'll have to race an aggressive uh, clean and try not to jeopardize anyone's title hopes or at least try not to like try not to wreck anyone obviously i mean I'm also like not only am I trying to think about trying to at least even though I'm a long shot for the title, try to um also race for rookie of the year also with uh Justin Durand also. Um he's five points ahead of me I believe at the moment. And I've also got that on my mind too and I just had I mean, just go into this race I'll have to just probably race aggressive and get 
stage points, possibly even go for the stage win at the very least. I mean, I feel like that's like the top thing I have to do, and it's not easy to do either that or if not be second in the stage. I mean, I'll just have to find that line of aggression, but race my competitors clean and try not to um, try to race the best I can for um, my situation while also trying not to jeopardize anyone else's uh, for Saturday night. Yeah, and you mentioned that Rookie of the Year battle with Justin Durand. Um, just looking back at the stats for the past couple races, uh, since Homestead Miami, um, Justin Duran has not finished outside of the top 10 during the race. Uh, and you've had three instances of a uh, finish outside of the top 10. So he's been able to keep a little more consistent. Uh, what's that like going through your head, you know, having to try to pull yourself back up uh, and get back into it and get back to the groove you had at the beginning of the season? I mean, it's, it's tough. Um, I felt like just, I don't know. I mean, I really thought I was going to be able to hold on to rookie of the year um, when we were about like that point of the season at Homestead, but Justin's just turned it up at the halfway point of the season and towards the playoffs. I mean, this guy probably had the, didn't he have the, I think this guy had the best finish in the first two playoff races and he had pretty good stage points in the first two races also. Um, and also at Martinsville too, um, stage points wise. I mean, it's just kind of tough. Like, I mean, I mean, Justin's just been racing and getting hot at the right time. I mean, props to him. I mean, he's been really competitive this playoffs. Um, I mean, he's also still. Um, he's. I mean, I don't know if I won't put him in the dark, dark horse category for the championship, but he's also in contention as well he's a bit closer in points to the title than i am and yeah just for this race um um yeah i mean if i'm to somehow surpass him it would just have to come down to racing him clean or very aggressive and do what i can in the stage to uh take advantage of um the points offered and try to uh get ahead of them if i can well, Mike, you ran so high in the regular season standings. Will it be an unsuccessful season if you can't move your position forward sitting right now in P6? Uh, I mean, a little bit, but I mean, at the start of the season, I mean, I really wouldn't have imagined like being this close to the championship to begin with, really. I mean, it would be a bit disappointing to like fall short at like the stage right now I'm finished sixth in points uh given how I was like around the top three to four maybe five at this around the season I just fall to six um just in the last few races it would be but it would be um it wouldn't be too uh disappointing though given how just the season's gone for me I mean I picked up two wins and I really didn't imagine I'd like get two of them I mean I thought maybe at least I could possibly get one but to get to and maybe have just some slip away this season and i mean still i mean it's still just really just still i mean i have a lot though to be proud of from this season just given all that's happened so i mean it wouldn't be too crushing really if i have just finished the season in six because i still have a lot to uh, hang my head up high on coming into the last race at kansas and however the season ends for me Unfortunately, on the mile and a half tracks this season, Mike, you've had bad runs, not being able to get any top tens. What do you uh, need to do to be able to put together a good race at Kansas this Saturday night? Um, just stay out of trouble, limit mistakes, and just try and run my race and just be um, more weary of any incidents that could occur uh, around me. I mean... For the mile and a half this season I've run, uh, I mean, surely I felt like I could have been able to have some long run speed and could have squeaked the top 10 out, but I got into an incident and had the pit for repairs, had to start in the back get for on the last um, restart of the night and just couldn't really make up the ground and finish like 13th 
Chicago land, I felt like I could have I had top five speed most of the race until I kind of took myself out and pretty much just took like a thirteenth again and pretty much threw away a possible top five, if not at least a top ten. And then Homestead just had tough luck getting involved in incidents. Um it's just for me coming into this race I just have to um just keep it clean also and just Say I have trouble and make it to the end to have a clean truck to at least have a shot at the title at the very least. For me, just based on the mile and a half we've run this year. Thanks for your time again, Mike, and good luck this Saturday night in the season finale. Thanks, Adam and Dawson. Uh, I uh, hope to um, look forward to Saturday night and hope it uh, goes well. Matthew starts in the 38 for T1A, now joins the ITPN report. Matthew, you got a 4th place finish at Phoenix Raceway two weekends back. How satisfying was that result? It was pretty good. It's definitely uh, a confidence booster, if i got to be honest. Uh, not really being able to get finishes or even even finish in the races um, really kind of, you know, had me feeling optimistic about how I'd be doing. Uh Definitely had, to be honest, had Phoenix uh, circled on the calendar. Uh, I really thought I could, you know, prevail at these short tracks and, and have a good race. And uh, finally was able to show it at the um, at this track, which felt great. And as a rookie to not only the league, but as a service in general... And the vehicles, what's the biggest difference right away on iRacing compared to something like PlayStation? Oh, it, it, oh, it, it's definitely uh, uh, tire saving, uh, trying to save your tires uh, for the long run. Um, that's something I struggled with, and I still struggle with a lot. So I really do, uh, I've tried to get better at that. Um, I've tried to learn that, and... Um, and uh, it's a struggle, but it's something I'm picking up. It's something really cool to learn, though. Absolutely. What were the biggest takeaways from that Phoenix race you were able to come home with? Uh, you know, never never give up. Uh, you know, uh, I had um, started second, and uh, which was very surprising, and then quickly dropped back and. Uh, um just uh stayed in it you know kept my head down and just let everything happen and play out the way it should um i, I trusted myself with long run speed um and uh it worked out great uh took care of the car took care of the truck made sure i brought home at least one piece and made sure i didn't make anyone mad around me especially with you know the chase going on and all that i didn't want to make anyone in the playoffs chase whatever it's called i didn't want to make no one mad I wanted to make sure I was friends with basically everyone all around me, and uh, I think I did that, so uh, I took a lot away from this. And beforehand, you mentioned some of the racetracks you've started to make your first career starts at, and they've been pretty challenging racetracks. What have you been able to learn the last couple of races when you haven't been able to get good finishes? Um, I just need to uh, be a little bit more patient, you know, uh, not try to try to rush myself into these type of situations, you know, um, I've learned that, uh, it's, you know, don't push so hard, uh, trying to get the most of everything when you just getting used to it. Um, and that's what I, that's why it really opened me up at, uh, I believe it was the Roval. Um, you know, I just told myself if I'm gonna, gonna try and do some of these challenging tracks, you know, I need to, I need to probably take it one step at a time and not, not just throw myself all around trying to be aggressive for what seems to be nothing at the moment. Well, Martinsville was unfortunately a night to forget for you. You were caught up in one of the many, many incidents we saw Saturday night. You were out of it early. So what was your opinion on that race in general and your predictions for this weekend at Kansas? Oh, that race. Martinsville was, uh, how do you want to say? It was very chaotic. Uh, for for as much as I was in it, um, it was <clears throat> very very 
horrible, in my opinion. Um, I guess the incident between what really started it was, um, I think it was like the 15 Chuck had his issue, and then then I got into gay by accident. Car or the truck just didn't turn. I just didn't understand the braking uh, going into the turn with uh, the restarts, and uh, then all this stuff happened again. Then Gabe decided to come back at me and just take me out. Uh, so he told me I deserved it or something like that. So it's whatever. Uh, then. I got enough damage to where I was down 14 laps and felt like I just need to pack it up. I was down on power, so that's what I did. Right, we'll go with Carl. Um, honestly, he's been consistent all year. Um, for what I've seen, he's been consistent. Obviously, besides the Phoenix incident happening, and then I guess a little bit of the Martinsville, Martinsville stuff, but um, I think it's really, really going to be easy for him to keep his car or his truck you know, out there. Uh, usually when he gets to the front, he, uh, he seems to never leave it, so... Uh, that's kind of where I'm looking at how this race is going to go for everybody. I think Carl's going to get out there, and no one's going to be able to pass him. Back on the ITPN report, number Kyle Ammon, the driver of the number five, Days Gone By Vintage Apparel, Elite Performance Industries, Chevrolet. Welcome back, Kyle, to the show. Last time we spoke to you on here, you were looking forward to Atlanta, new racetrack you weren't really quite sure how it was going to work out and it ended up ended up with a second place finish there yeah we uh brought a pretty good car there that uh to atlanta and um it worked out pretty good we were off strategy most of the race but um it ended up working out uh fairly well stayed away from all the trouble and came out with a, a second I had a shot to win but just didn't materialize at the end And another top 10 with a ninth place run at New Hampshire Motor Speedway last weekend. How was that race, Kyle? Uh, it was a, a bit of a tougher race for us. Uh, we had good speed, qualified decent. I think we qualified 7th. Uh, um, it was a bit of a struggle. Uh, after the second stage, we, we got off strategy, uh, made a couple adjustments that didn't work out, and it took a, a while to get him out, and then... Once we got him out, it was just uh, we we fought back for our track position, got involved in a couple incidents, um, and but we're managed able to manage a a top top ten out of it, which is a good day. Unfortunately, if things work out the way they do, we may be out of a playoff spot, but we'll uh, we'll see how it pans out. Um, we had a new winner last week that was below. Actually, last two weeks we've had a winner that was below and. Um, they may knock us out depending on if one guy gets in above the top 25, but if he doesn't, then we're, we're okay. We'll miss one more race for the year, so we've got to gain as, uh, as many valuable points as we can the next couple weeks. Pocono is coming up this weekend, and then a road course at Indianapolis, Michigan, which can be a wild card race possibly with, the, with it being, of course, a bigger track, and then... Watkins Glen, another road course. Richmond is in there, and the Daytona regular season finale is going to be chaotic. How important are those races going to be? Um, they're going to be very important. Indy is going to be a, a different one, uh, depending on if we get a new layout or not. Um, but that one's going to be tough. We have some really good road course racers in the league. Um, Michigan, uh, if any, Pocono could dictate how we run at Michigan. Uh, along with Atlanta, if it, Michigan runs like Atlanta, then we should run fairly well. Uh, Richmond, I didn't race in the spring, so it's going to be, I'm going to be up for uh, learning. And then Daytona, you know, I, I think I earned some friends uh, at Atlanta, so hopefully they uh, they repay the favor going into Daytona for uh, for on the cut line here. Yeah, you mentioned beforehand that you were caught up in a few incidents in New Hampshire. Overall, the teams had a few unfortunate weekends. Yeah, the guy. Uh, everybody's working really hard for us, and uh, you know, uh, one guy got taken. Uh, Matt got taken out in a wreck at, in the overtime, and then uh, Rob got taken out in an incident early in the race at Atlanta, and they weren't able to show. You know what kind of speed they had. They all had really good speed, and 
you know, we're bringing really good cars to the track. I got to thank uh, Dustin Hall and uh, for all the work he's been doing to help us gain some speed here the last few weeks. Heading to Pocono this weekend, ran up front in both races last season. How much are you looking forward to that racetrack? Obviously a new car, but still same old racetrack. Yeah, Pocono's a fairly good track for uh, for me, uh, personally. Um, we don't know what the new car's going to do yet. Uh, we'll give it a whirl here in a couple in a day or so and get our feet wet. And we'll watch the Coke race tonight to learn a little bit. Um, yeah, last year we struggled with speed, and for me, uh, with some strategy, we were able to pull out two top tens, uh, one the state, one of the stages, and one of the races, and uh, managed to come out with a top ten or top five, and the the second one with a chaotic finish at the end. So, I mean, anything can happen. Uh, just gotta, you just gotta be there at the end to when the pay window opens. All right, well, we look forward to seeing you do battle this weekend in Pocono. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, and uh, give, her, give her give her a good shot. Thanks again for joining the show, and good luck this weekend, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. This episode of the ITPN Report is brought to you by FACES, the National Craniofacial Association. Donate today at faces-cranio.org to adopt a face, donate directly, fundraise yourself, or to gift match. Faces-cranio.org to donate today. Thanks again. Now, back to the program. Back on the ITPN report for moments on JCTV with Josh Coppano and Craig Fryer. Craig, we're looking forward to Pocono that's going to be taking place here in a couple minutes for us. Um, what do you expect for that race tonight? Yeah, uh, hey guys, thanks for having me on today. Um, so with Pocono, I, I actually haven't really ran this track yet, but from my understanding, you know, after just watching racing here, um, it's going to act a lot like a normal super speedway. Um, I mean, you were still, I ran about 15 laps of this so far, and you're, you're cracking, cracking the throttle on all three corners, uh, but it's going to be very draft dependent, and just running laps by yourself out here really has zero indication on, on what it's going to be out there when you get 20 other cars around here. Well, it's the last race of the regular season, uh, tonight the regular season comes to a close, so... Who do you think uh, is really going to show up? You know, try to make last uh, last year's push to make the playoffs tonight. Yeah, so in order to make the playoffs, you got to finish, I think, top 20. Um, so I think the top 20 is pretty much set. I don't think anybody else is going to really jump in um, from that. So, you know, there's eight guys that are really looking to or are all in win and they're in situations. I know Reuter is... 70 something points back so he can't even get in on points alone and and i do believe that uh, we got wineland showing up today so that pretty much eliminates the option of him you know he will achieve the minimum number of races required um so i think we got you know 11 locked in so far and you know if if no one really you know catches up a lot of points in dalton then there's a possibility of maybe Dalton losing it if one of those guys wins. But, you know, looking at those eight guys, um, you know, it's funny to say, but Mason Lowry, um, he's in 20th right now in points. Every single race he has done in here, he has wrecked, um, which is he's had the worst luck. That's the only luck he's had is just terrible luck. Um, you know, every single time I drive with him, we're pretty much neck and neck, and I know that when I show up, I having a fighter's chance to win a race. Um, I'd be interested to see who else is going to show up as far as like those top dogs, including like Cam and, and Rich. I know Rich has driven a lot of, a lot of laps here. Um, just talking to him over the 
throughout the last couple of days. So I expect him to show up. So Rich should have, you know, a top top two cars, my guess. Um, but yeah, just looking at that outside outsiders, uh, Ruder, you know, he's had he's had some good results. He just stuff. missed three races, you know, at the midpoint in the season. That kind of hurt him from the point situation. But he has had some good runs, but he's mainly a short track kind of guy. Um, well, maybe. I'm I'm looking at the list right now. Armistead, he's put together some good, you know, mile and a half races. Um, I I like him if he if he shows up to you know give a good top eight finish. Um, can he win? You know, I I think he can finish a good top five with a very low fighter's chance if depending on who shows up tonight. But um, looking at the grid so far, we've got eight guys that show up. You know, Alonzo's here. Uh, he he puts on some good races. Um, Eric Weinland's back after his absence, so we're excited for him. So you know, I kind of just named off for everybody, but if I had to keep an eye on anybody again, it's going to be Mason. Just, uh, well, after tonight, the playoffs are going to begin, of course, August third at the Indianapolis Raceway Park. What's going to be the biggest challenge beginning the postseason at a track like that? Yeah, it's it's tough if you look at those first three races. Um, two of them are you got to really keep cleaning it. Um, Lucas Oil, you just got to really stay out of trouble. But the problem is, is um, there's already three or four guys that just have or two or three guys that have a lot of points already to start. Um, so the rest of us are going to be making up ground and only eight advance. So it's it's tough to just say I'm going to sit back um, because. You know, you got to get stage points. That's, that's it's going to come down to points at the end, especially if one of those guys in the, you know, that third through twelfth gets a win. You know, that just makes it even tougher for the the back end guys to to win. And also, you want to get um, some stage wins to help add points. You know, to the next three races uh, moving forward. But big thing is is keeping it clean. It, it drives kind of like a New Hampshire ish. Maybe Darlington a little bit, maybe a mixture of those two. Um, so it's it's a challenging race, and you got to be patient um, and take your moves while they're there. And qualifying is going to be big as well because it's very tough to pass, and if not, you're just going to be burning your tires. So it it'll be a fun track. It wasn't on our schedule last year, um, so I think we're all curious to see how it's going to turn out. Hopefully, we get a good showing. That I'm I'm sure we will. Obviously, we'll have at least 12 people. <laughs> But um, there's going to be a lot of other guys that are hungry as well. And and that'll be the other thing, too, is the guys that aren't in the playoffs, you know, that they're all playing with house money and they can just go out to win races and not have to worry about points. So they can just start up at the front and just drive drive with the rest of us. And is that going to be good for us? We don't know. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that wreck in front of us or behind us that probably take out a couple of playoff drivers, but that's racing. You know, we're we're all here to race and stuff happens. So this track is uh, 2.5 miles in length. Uh, of course, it's a, a triangle track, uh, known as the Tricky Triangle. It's three different turns. Uh, turn one based off of uh, Trenton, turn two based off uh, Milwaukee, and turn three based off Indianapolis uh, Motor Speedway. So what do you? how do you feel like uh, the setup is going to be like trying to get around three different corners? Yeah, you, you're basically setting yourself up, you know, to not not be good on one or two of the turns. Uh, I'd say you want to be the best on on turn three, just because the straightaway that follows that um, is so long. Um, turn two, you know, just driving around in practice. Turn three was the hardest for me, just getting back to the pedal. I found myself the the butt keeps wanting to kick out on it a lot, but if you don't make it loose off, then one and two, you just can't get back to it. Two, you. It's uh, it's an interesting. It, it looks intimidating, but you're out of the throttle, then right back into it, and it's really not that bad. Um, maybe it's different in the other type of cars, but I think two is the easiest. Um, three is just a lot of patience and and throttle plan. So you, you, if you can figure three out, I think you got a good shot. Um, for for being up in top of the front and also not killing your tires too, because you can 
throttle play in and drive it in too deep and the biggest thing is getting off fast so if you're you know you you left a little early that's not going to hurt you too much i don't think david's tires is going to be big too um i think i drove about eight eight laps or so in a run my tire fall off was about 0.8 seconds so we'll start to i think our longest run we should have is around 15 laps so there's two stage two stages and i'm sure there'll be a break a little bit in the middle we got four tire sets tonight so I'm sure we're going to use all of them well as the defending champion in the mode and pc juggernaut truck series how are you going to view these upcoming playoffs that are going to kick off in a couple weekends um yeah right now i i've had i don't know looking at last year i I was up at the front the whole time. I had, I think, nine second-place finishes in the 24 races that we had, so I was very good. Um, this year I've had some bad luck, but also I haven't really had the pace that I had last year. Um, lack of practice, um, more talent. We've had a lot of additions, um, so props to them for showing up, obviously. But, yeah, I'm probably a top eight driver, but after that I'm, I'm just going to be playing with house money. Hopefully I can get get a win in that second series and hopefully I can get to the second series or second group of three races if you want to call it um but you know shout out to to Martin PC for for giving me that PC for allowing me to race in a playoff last week my computer gave out which is why I missed New Hampshire and I got a loaner PC now I'm for Martin for the next couple of races while they build me a new PC so um you know, their service is top notch and I get hand delivered by one of their staff and good good people there. Um yeah. I dropped a couple spots and points and that might hurt me moving forward, but you know, just to be able to race tonight is, is awesome considering what happened and uh it was a pretty quick turnaround to get get another PC. I think it was three days and got one got one sitting here and plug and play, it was awesome. The MartinPC.com Truck Series Playoffs start August 3rd at 8 p.m. on JCTV. The In the Pits News Truck Series second season concludes this Saturday night at Kansas, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on JCTV.